In this video, we introduce two new topics, JAXRS, which is allowing us to do REST services in a new way in XPages, and Bean Validation. Uh, and the two more or less interchange, they, they play nicely together, which is a recurring theme in all of the tools that are being presented in this video series, how they all work together. So um, some good stuff here. I'm going to let Jesse take it away. Since this was the starting point of the whole thing, based on, on Martin's work, here I go in and say, I want to have a, a basic example of REST services. So the way um, JAXRS, which is technically called Jakarta REST now, it's what they all went through renames for, for like, you can't say Java legal reasons, um, uh, but everyone still says JAXRS and will for a while. So JAXRS or Jakarta REST is a spec where you can, you define your REST services in Java classes. So you're not, you don't have a separate file where you're mapping, here's where this REST service goes, that sort of thing. Um, and it's these annotations. So if you've done stuff with the, um, like Oda uses this, the extension library uses this internally, and a couple other people have picked up on what the extension library provides via Wink, it's these same annotations uh, in their older forms. So you'll say at path. And so this means that within your application, you'll have slash sample as a path. Um, and then you'll say at get, and that means that when somebody does a get request, so just visiting it with a browser or using curl or something like that to request this URL, it will call this method and it's this method's job to return something. So that something can be HTML, it can be here it's text, it could be streaming a file attachment, it could be whatever you want. So this is a way of saying without having to do the whole I'm writing a servlet and handling all the input and output, this is just Here's, here's the method I want to get called when, when it comes in with get, and here's what I want to do. So it really, really makes that clean and clear. And so here, I'm ha I happen to combine this with managed bean stuff that I'll get into in a bit. But the idea is basically I build a response that says this is going to be plain text, and then it's going to be this string, and then it sends it back to the browser. So if I go back to here, it's I think it's this one. So you can see the URL ends up being for technical reasons. You have your NSF, then slash XSP slash app, and then the path that you put in there. So XSP slash app is the base of your application. Um, now, do you pass in a header? Like, is that is that uh, if I was going to use, for example, um, Postman to call that URL, mm -hmm. do I have to do some some header param formatting? Obviously, authentication and all of that good stuff. But what, what I'm what I'm not seeing in the code here is, and I've been building a decent amount of REST services lately, um, just kind of that methodology of there's header parameters, there's body parameters, um, and you know what's the format that I'm going to get back. So you're saying, for example, it is text plain, and I could, for example, say it's it's application JSON, right? I could mm -hmm. I could set that as the media type. Okay. So there gets to be some neat stuff there. So um, there are the two ends of it of, of taking incoming request parameters and then changing the output. So what I'm doing here is the most basic, is one of the basic kind of raw forms where there's no, there's nothing coming in from the input other than the path. Um, and the output is something I'm building manually where I'm saying this is an, a you know, 200 okay response, text plane, and here's the, here's the response. There I are a couple of other- that all in one line. That is so awesome. Yeah, well, and the nice thing is you don't even actually need to do everything I did there. So let's see. Yeah, this will this will be a good example. So for different types of output, here I have this other annotation that says at produces. So what this oh. is doing is saying this is going to produce XML, which that handles the response header of type text XML. Yes. Beyond that, it doesn't just handle that because what I'm returning is just this object. So this is just a class that I happen to have annotated with XML annotations and here's how it's transformed in XML. What happens is that the JAXRS runtime sees this and says, I've been told that this method returns XML and what I've been given is this object I don't understand. So what I'm going to do is, do I have something that will take a generic object and turn it into XML? And the answer here is yes, it uses XML binding to turn it into XML. This also works for JSON. So if, if I said application JSON for this and then just passed it some object, it would go through the JSON binding and say, turn this into JSON. So it will handle that serialization for you. So you don't have to write XML. You don't have to manually say, turn this into XML. What you do is you say, I want this the environment to produce XML and here's an object, 
figure it out. So in this case, I do happen to have hints for what it should be called in XML. Uh, this is the Jakarta spec for defining that. If I didn't, it would just use the, the name. So here it says name is time, but if I left that off, it would still use time because that's the, the, the name of the parameter. Here I yep. happen to use, but you don't have to. And so like it, it reuses the same thing. Similarly, I also annotated this for testing purposes for JSON output. So elsewhere, if I were to say, uh, return this as JSON, and I think I do, it would convert it to JSON instead of converting it to XML. And you're and passing so it, the exact same object. Right, yeah, and uh, so it says, you know, and if I said, if the return type was uh, text plain, it would just do two string on it. And then you can do other things. Like for example, if you had your own type, like. This isn't built in, but you could say it produces PDF, and then you would write your own class that says when there's a PDF, when there's an object that's supposed to go to PDF, it will call that class, and then you can write your own logic. That's yeah. getting down into the weeds, but yeah. that's something you can do here. Awesome. And then this method would remain the same other than changing from application XML to whatever yeah. the MIME type for PDF is. Crazy. Cool. So, uh, yeah, this is used in a couple places, um, but that doesn't cover uh, input. So uh, that covers just like a get request coming in and then it puts something out. However, the way you do input is you add parameters to the method. So here, there this is go. a, this takes a query parameter that says it looks for a query field named required field. So if I go, uh, where is validation? So here I have the URL up at the top where it's validation, request validation, question mark, required field equals hello. So that passes. And here I say um, it's invalid because there's no required field. So there's a couple of things that are going on here. And this is actually the interaction both with JaxRS that I'm specifically talking about, but also bean validation. Uh, so I'm saying if I want the query string field required field, I can just say this parameter to the Java method is a query parameter. Similarly, I could do header parameter of you know x sum header, and then when JaxRS calls this, it will say ah, it has it like not only do I see there's a get, but also it has these extra annotations. It wants these things to be parsed out, so it will say I need to look for the required field query parameter. It passes that in for that parameter, and it wants this header, and so it passes that in as the second parameter. You can do this, there are a couple other things you can do. For example, if you are posting form content, so like URL encoded or multi-part form, it will parse that out as well. So you can say at form param, uh, and then you can do these things wholesale where you would say at bean param, where for example, if I had, there's this class validation bean, which just has foo and bar as properties, I could, and I don't hear, but I could do it where I'd say at bean param, of one of these, and it would expect you to post, for example, a JSON version of this bean, it would deserialize that, give you in Java an object of this type with those fields set, because you just say bean param, and it would fill all this stuff in for you. Um, Fabulous. It might not be bean param in that case. There's like a couple intricacies of this, but like that's part of the idea is that you can do these things wholesale, and then they all work together. So the Java processing and Java binding specs are other Jakarta specs that I brought in here. You can see in this example here, it's uh, this is the rest validation invalid. What it's doing is it's saying this is a required field is missing because I didn't pass the parameter. So this is before it gets to my code, but also it's by default these things that are returned, these invalid ones, I think because I didn't say JSON, it comes back as XML in this nicely formatted thing. So here it's, I'm trying to call this service and not providing all the parameters. It doesn't even get to my code. I don't have to, in this code, check to see is required field null or is required field empty. I already said, not empty. I could say it also has to be at least three characters long, or it also has to pass some custom validation. And so these specs work together where this at not empty is the bean validation spec. So that can be used both as a way to say, is this bean that I've created valid, which is, uh, I'll get to in a moment, but also used in other places to say, is the request incoming valid? Like this way, I don't have to have guards in all of my stuff. So, for example, if I always need to have a certain header, or if I have, or if a method always has to have a query string, or it has to have X, Y, or Z, 
I can do all of these checks and just have the runtime take care of it. And I don't have to worry because my code won't even be called if it's not valid. And that's kind of a lot of the point of this stuff that it's meant to work together, that the system is doing this work for you. These are things that you can do in X pages. Like you can write a REST service in X pages that checks for query parameters, but X pages will not check for you. And you have to do that everywhere. And you can't just say, I just want not empty. Like, I don't care how you do it. I don't care what the mechanism is. I don't care who does it. I just want to make yep. sure that this incoming header or er, query parameter is not empty. And if it is empty, my code never gets called. Brilliant. Love it. And then, <laughs> like I was saying, that applies also to bean validation. So this is something where if you have a um, just, you know, and by whenever I say bean, I basically mean Java class. So bean yep. has technical meanings as far as it's supposed to have properties or methods with get and set and things like that. So it, it it's a little more specific than just Java class, but really it just means Java class. There's no magic to it. You don't have to implement a specific thing. You don't have to do anything. It's just a Java class. Uh, and here I'm saying now this, like the, the value of foo cannot be empty. The value of bar has to be between three and five inclusive, I think characters, uh, yeah, inclusive characters. Um, in order to be considered valid. So this is a little more indirect or a little more, um, it takes a little more work than the implicit one of the incoming header. But what the way this works is that I have created this bean and then I can run it through this method. I've created a utility to get around some Java policy issues. Uh, but I can call this method and say, is the bean I created valid? So the, the where this comes into play uh, is when you're doing a data access layer. So, you know, in Domino, a lot of the times you will do like, just create a document, replace item value, and then save. But what you'd really want to do would be to have a class that represents, this is the data abstractly in memory. The fact that it's then stored as a document is incidental, but having a separate class. So you can imagine instead of foo and bar, this would be company name. This would be you know, dollar value for an invoice or whatever. Um, yep. You could have various properties of like, this is my business logic. So this has to meet these criteria to be even considered valid for saving. And so what you would do is you would have it incoming either because it's user input or it's computed based on some other thing, just saying, is this in a valid state? And then you can do this check and it will throw exceptions saying, here are the things that are wrong. Here's the things that you need to fix. Um, so here you'd see parameter is, is not empty. Um, did I have a, a JSON based one of those somewhere or other? <laughs> I have this whole list of, of things that are that uh, test these various things. But the idea is that you get this kind of clear thing that's saying your problem is that required field is empty and that can't be empty as opposed to invalid data. Like you do get more specific yeah. stuff. And then you could also handle that however you want. Um, but then this spec again ties into other specs in the system. So these are not all standalone. Like some of them can be used standalone, but you know, JAXRS uses bean validation to check these things. JAXRS uses XML binding to emit XML. It uses JSON binding to emit JSON for you. And all of these things, and they all build on each other. Mm -hmm.